Hey food lovers, it's your boy Nox and welcome to my kitchen. Today I've got a delicious meatballs recipe for you that is packed with lots of flavour. You can cook this in any sauce of your choice, but today I'll be making these in a tomato and basil sauce. So, let's get started. For this recipe, I'm using a mix of lean beef and pork. I've got here 500 grams of beef and 500 grams of pork. Pork is slightly fattier than beef, so it helps make the meatballs extra juicy. And also having a mixture of two different types of meat gives your meatballs a certain type of flavor. Check out the description section for a list of all the ingredients I'm using in this recipe. So to begin with, I'm going to finely chop one long red chili, just to give my meatballs that extra kick. You can skip this if you're not into spicy food or reduce the quantity of chili to suit your preference. Following this, I'm going to chop half an onion. This will be going into the meatballs, so we want to make sure there are no large chunks of onion or chili when we bite into the meatballs. I'll be adding some fresh parsley as well. I love cooking with fresh herbs as they tend to give a certain fresh and aromatic appeal to my dish. However, feel free to use dried parsley if you've got that. Speaking of dried herbs, I'll be adding half a teaspoon of mixed herbs, then some garlic powder, onion salt, and Chinese five spice. I will then add an egg and combine. Following this, I will be making some breadcrumbs for my meatballs. You can buy these from the shops, but I do prefer to make mine myself. It's fairly straightforward. All you have to do is bleach a couple of toasted bread in a food processor. I'll be using about 35 grams of the breadcrumbs for these. To my breadcrumbs, I will add some milk, just enough for the breadcrumbs to absorb the milk. This will help to keep my meatballs soft and juicy. I'll then add this breadcrumb mixture to my meat and combine. Moving on, I'm going to roll my mixture into large balls, roughly the size of a golf ball. With this recipe, you can make your meatballs ahead of time and freeze. Simply defrost whenever you're ready to use them. All right, I'll proceed to making my tomato and basil sauce. I will start by chopping an onion and a garlic. Then heat about two tablespoons of olive oil in a large pan and sear my meatballs for about a minute on each side on a medium to high heat. I'm using a frozen batch of meatballs I made a week earlier. All you have to do is defrost your meatballs and it's good to go. Once you're done with searing your meatballs, remove and set aside. Using the same pan, add your chopped onion and cook on medium to low heat for about two minutes. Cook till your onion becomes translucent and then add your chopped garlic and cook for about a minute as well. Following this, I'll add about two tablespoons of tomato paste, 800 grams of chopped tomatoes, and two teaspoons of sugar. The sugar helps reduce the acidity and tartness of the tomato and help create an overall balanced sauce. Stir this and cover with a lid and simmer for about five to seven minutes while stirring occasionally. Following this, I'll add about a cup and a half of chicken stock. Feel free to use beef stock if you've got that. And then I'll add one bouillon or maggi cube. Add salt to taste, stir and combine. I'll then add my meatballs and juice from resting. Stir this, cover and simmer for about 20 minutes while stirring occasionally. This looks delicious and ready to go. To finish up, I'm gonna turn off the heat and tear in a few basil into my sauce. So there you go food lovers, this is my go-to sauce for meatballs. I like to keep my sauce simple as my meatballs is packed with lots of flavors on its own. The rich tomato sauce complements the meatballs and you can have this with any side dish of your choice. Rice, pasta, couscous, quinoa, the list is endless. One way I love indulging on this is to have it on a buttered toast topped up with some parmesan cheese. Give this a go and you'll thank me later. All right, food lovers, so that's it for me today. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think about this recipe. If you enjoy watching this video, please like, subscribe, and click the notification button to get updated on every single video I upload. Once again, thank you, see you later.